Let's start with that criticism that's Good been morning. angled at the inquiry board. Unrepresentative of the community, when we look at the panel, and we've got a picture of the panel now, uh, it's fair to say it's not particularly diverse, is it? No, it isn't. It really isn't. And, and we are a very, very mixed community here. Um, and uh, no, I think, and, and it's not only how they are actually behave, it's how, how it's perceived by people out here. And that's, you know, the, the people's concerns about what may or may not happen and what's going to be taken into account. It doesn't look good. It's not a good start. Well, how will that change? How can that change? Yeah. Uh, well, we'll have to see how they actually proceed, if they have any sensitivities, but uh, it, it's too late now. And we're going to find out in three hours exactly uh, the terms and how it's going to work and the timetable and so on. We'll have to see if we have any confidence after that in, in the whole process. We spoke to two former residents of Grenfell Tower, both still in hotel accommodation. Uh, we understand uh, you yeah. know, only three families have been uh, permanently rehomed. The, the two residents that yes. we spoke to, Sidali and uh, Antonio, uh, having very little faith in the public inquiry three months on, yeah. how much faith do you yeah. have as an MP, as the local MP, into this getting to the root of what went wrong? Uh, well, I don't think it's going to get into the root of it. What is it? What we are getting is what we feared, which is a purely technical exercise, which I'm sure Sir Martin will be very good at. But between that and the criminal investigation, there's a yawning gap of all the why questions, which we're not going to get to. I don't think we're going to get to. We'll have to see. But I can't imagine. That's, that's the community's fear, and that's my fear. And there's the fear that we, we, we got from both our guests this morning, Sidali and Antonio. Let's talk about the... the the, the rehousing and, and finding homes for these families. As Susanna said, three families have yeah. been moved to permanent accommodation. There's been 22 offers of permanent accommodation that have been accepted. It's just taking a while to, to process those. Uh, 150 families are still in hotels. Theresa May said everyone was going to be found a home by the 1st of September. Uh, that deadline has been missed by a long mm -hmm. way. Why is this proving so complicated, Emma? I, w I would love to know. I really will. We've got all the resources in the world. We've got all the personnel. We've got top people from every council in London coming in to help, uh, bending over backwards, and it still isn't working. There's something really, really wrong in the middle of all this, and the coordination has been appalling. As MP, I've, half the time I had no idea who I should be writing to to get help, and that's not good enough. I don't know who's coordinating this, but there's a lack of coordination, to put it very politely. How, how I, I, that's, that seems extraordinary to say as, as an MP in the area, you don't know who's coordinating the rehousing of all these uh, residents. I know who's actually doing it, but I don't know who's coordinating the whole process. And it's clearly not going very well. I'm visiting people all the time in their hotels, out and about. I have surgeries, and the frustration is huge. Nobody wants to take their children from a hotel to school, have the children come back to a hotel. They have nowhere to do their homework, nowhere to relax. It's very unstable. It's a terrible, terrible start in life. And you know, this is, I, I'm just appalled. I really am. The people are being betrayed every day, as they were on the morning of the 14th of June. Mm. Um, uh, the public inquiry is going to uh, examine so many things, and I know you know plenty of people uh, don't have have faith in the fact that it'll ask the right questions. And you've you know said that yourself. What about the questions that people are asking about your own accountability? As councillor, you were on the Housing Scrutiny Committee, which oversaw community safety issues up until May 2014. Uh, you're named in a report which says uh, which uh, scrutinised work on the Grenfell Tower. You were on the board of the Kensington and Chelsea Tenant Management Association uh, when the tower's refurbishment was discussed. Have you asked yourself questions about whether you could have done more? in the run-up to the refurbishment and scrutiny yeah. of that refurbishment. Well, in the early days, there were lots of accusations being bandied about, and actually somebody got beaten up for that, for defending me. I was not on the board. I was nowhere near the process of the refurbishment. When I was on the board of the TMO, we agreed that work needed to be done, money needed to be spent. But even if I had been on the board, I would not have been anywhere near the decision-making process of the cladding or, the, or whether or not there were fire breaks and how it was fitted. And all of those issues are so far away from a minority party councillor sitting on a board of uh, tenants and, and senior councillors. And by the way, Elizabeth Campbell, the leader of the council, was also sat on the board of that. Nobody's looking at her. Nobody's looking at the Conservative councillor who's been on it before, during and after. So I think we know why I'm being accused of something. I've been off the board for five 
years, I've got a little bit bored of, of people coming about the same accusation. People need to do their homework. I sent out a rebuttal with all the links, and people can check themselves exactly who was where do when, you, and I was nowhere near it. Yeah, and will you be appearing as the local MP and um, you know someone who has been on the, on the council in the area for a very long time? Will you be appearing yourself mm -hmm. in front of the public inquiry? Oh, I, I put myself forward. I've offered myself as a core participant, and I'll give them all the help I can. Whether or not they want me, I don't know. I imagine they may. But of course I have. Of course I'll help in any way I can to get to the truth of what, but also why. OK. Emma Dentko, Labour MP for Kensington. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, we should say that Kensington and Chelsea Council say that last month they committed £76.5 million towards finding new homes for the Grenfell survivors.